The fall of 2018 is loaded with games with something for everyone, and on PS4 and the Xbox One, each one will have a big exclusive competing for our gaming time. PS4's Spider-Man from Insomniac on September 7th, and Xbox's Forza Horizon 4 on October 2nd. We're going to do something totally crazy today and figure out which game is going to score the highest. An open world superhero game versus an open world racing game. Cue the acoustic guitar riff in D. If you haven't yet, go check out Dealer Gaming's comprehensive analysis of Spider-Man vs. Batman Arkham. Both games have a similar approach to combat, fantastic stuff, and the link is in the description. I know it sounds like a joke, but today we are seriously going to compare the Spider-Man game with Forza Horizon 4. And why? Well, because Spider-Man looks to be one of PS4's best rated games of this year after God of War. And Xbox One only has Forza Horizon 4 this fall to answer with. Forza Horizon is no slouch, yes, it's just a racing game, but most would agree that it's the best racing game of the past decade. Before we get started, let's take a look at games in the series and their respective Metacritic scores. We'll start with Spider-Man. This is Insomniac's first Spider-Man game. There have been many Spider-Man games made by different developers, just looking at the PS3, 360 era through the current gen. So we'll take a portion of those scores into account and reflect them off the previous Insomniac games. We'll aggregate those scores and it'll get us in the ballpark for one perspective for a review score prediction. Second, we'll break down this new Spider-Man game based on a categorical review. First of all, the Activision Spider-Man games will answer that appeal of the character, Spider-Man, in current video games, and they'll aggregate to a score of 62.4%, which is pretty low. But since that is not Insomniac, those were made by Activision with mixed reviews, will add a factor of an extra 10%, since Insomniac typically gives their games more care and attention and that will bring the aggregate score to 72.4%. The Ratchet & Clank series is six games on PS3 and one on PS4. They average out to a score of 78.5% and they lay the foundation of what Insomniac can do with platforming and combat. The Resistance series of three games may never live beyond the PS3 according to Insomniac, but the aggregate score for those is 85.3%. Fuse was a third-person co-op shooter on the PS3 and 360. It scored a 63. But Sunset Overdrive is the large buildup for what Insomniac can do in the open world and traversal. Sunset Overdrive has an 81% on Metacritic, and those two games combined, Fuse and Sunset Overdrive, make it a 72%. So let's add all these together and get a perspective on Insomniac's pedigree over the past two console generations and the appeal of a Spider-Man game. And since Spider-Man on PS4 so far has a great outlook, previews are nothing short of impressive, we are going to add an additional 10% onto the score, and that brings us to a final prediction number for Spider-Man, based on Insomniac's track record, to an 87% Metacritic score. Now let's take a look at the criteria of categorized scoring based on the footage and information available for Spider-Man on PS4. To make this analysis happen, we have to lay down some criteria, and in classic fashion, we are going to score each game's potential based off of four categories. Story, gameplay, graphics, and multiplayer or replayability. First of all, story. The story of Spider-Man follows Peter Parker and his struggle with family, friends, and as he settles into his years as a superhero. You will be fighting against a group called the Inner Demons and this conflict with a prominent businessman and mentor who is hiding his evil intentions, which is in conflict with Peter's own Aunt May. Insomniac has taken careful attention to character, villains, and personal conflict. The story will be an excellent motivator to push forward, and Insomniac has normally made campy story-based games along with more serious tone grit, but Spider-Man should easily get an 8 out of 10 for story. Gameplay Spider-Man is an open-world game with a dynamic city full of enemies, side missions, and chapter with boss battles, covering the spectrum of famed villains in the Spider-Man universe. Traversal will provide a sense of freedom, power, and fun, with climbing and web-slinging mechanics to give you full access around, above, and through the city. 
Combat is centered around attack and counter-timed attacks, much like the popular and successful games like Batman Arkham, Shadow Mordor, and Sleeping Dogs, except in Spider-Man the combat is mixed with traversal to make battles more dynamic, cover large areas, and more room for creativity. An upgrade system with evolving tech will keep the combat fresh and challenging. The gameplay will offer tons of variety, and everything so far looks solid and reliable. Gameplay gets a 9 out of 10. Graphics The open world is not a dynamic weather or day-night cycle. It relies on story-progressed day or night environments preset by the game. Preset sunrises and sunsets will visually bring this game to life as you swing past the cars and buildings around New York. Spider-Man is using a temporal injection 4K frame buffer, which utilizes offset frame scaling to offer half of 4K with minimal artifacting in motion. Even without the high-resolution render, Spider-Man's level of detail, lighting, and texture work in concert with high-quality animation and art style will bring it to one of the year's best-looking adventure games next to God of War. The game will run at 30 FPS and Insomniac stated that 60 FPS was not feasible due to the CPU constraints in the PS4 and the PS4 Pro and that they needed parity and performance between the PS4 consoles. And I predict graphics to be a 10 out of 10. Multiplayer or replayability Spider-Man is strictly a single-player experience in the open world with side missions and collectibles, so the omission of co-op or competitive online gameplay is offset with a 30 plus hour gameplay offering. But Insomniac is alluding to offering a new game plus later on post release. But this brings down longevity and replayability and that brings the score to a 6 out of 10. This brings the overall score prediction for Spider-Man on PS4 to an 8 out of 10. If we combine the Metacritic prediction with the categorized review score, we get an overall prediction score of 84 on Metacritic. Now, let's do the exact same process with Forza Horizon 4. Each iteration of Forza Horizon has added more features, more events, more cars, and more variation, and more gameplay opportunities. But at this point in the series, is it staled out because it is basically the same foundation? Well, sports titles and annualized shooters continue to find success, and Forza Horizon 3 proved that the series is only going upward. We'll start with the previous Forza Horizon games. The first one scored an 85, the second an 86, and Forza Horizon 3 in 2016 got a 91. This is the only Xbox game to come close to PS4's highest ranking game, God of War, at a 95. But the Forza Horizon series aggregates out at 87.3%. Forza Horizon has increased 3% upon each release, and the improvements of the evolving series brings it up to 90.3%. Now let's take a look at the criteria of categorized scoring based on the footage and information available for Forza Horizon 4. We are going to score each of the game's potentials based off of these four criteria. Story, gameplay, graphics, multiplayer, or replayability. Let's start with story. Forza Horizon 4 story is based on a racer joining a countryside festival filled with the world's greatest cars and their drivers. Other than the festival rep coaching you along, there is absolutely no story in the single player campaign. The story is created by the user and who you interact with online. For those looking for a heartwarming tale of a boy in his car, you will not find it here and that brings down the score for Forza Horizon 4 and it gets a 5 out of 10 for story. Gameplay. There is no racer in the business that rivals Forza Horizon. The feel and the control with the perfect mix of sim and arcade, the diversity of topography, roadway surfaces, and the off-road destructible environments married with the tactile response of over 400 cars. Forza Horizon 4 will have custom small and large races, showcase events with mammoth vehicles and stunts across multiple disciplines. The open world is set in Britain with wildlife and a dynamic day and night cycle. It takes weather and time a step further by interchanging the order of seasons weekly, pushing the game into the fall season at launch and the second week into snowy winter, affecting the look and feel of the game to be as dynamic and fresh as possible. Forza's DNA and pedigree of gameplay based on Turn 10 and Playground Games guarantees a gameplay score of 9 out of 10. Graphics Forza Horizon 4 is probably one of the best, if not the top five best looking game, period. 
The detail on the cars, the lush environment, striking sunlight, stunning sunsets, lush roadside vegetation, and photorealistic historic landmarks and slippery snow and ice and mud deforming under the tires, creating the most immersive racer of all time. Forza Horizon 4 will run at a fixed native 4K at 30 FPS, rivaling the presentation of Spider-Man in art style and technicality with no compromises to visual clarity in motion, which is paramount in a racing game. And if that wasn't enough, Playground has decided to reward Xbox One X and PC players with the option to play all of these visual benefits at 60 FPS, with the Xbox One X version fixed to 1080p at 60 frames. Graphics gets a score matching Spider-Man at 10 out of 10. Multiplayer or replayability. Forza Horizon 4 has a robust single-player campaign consisting of a variety of races competitively as well as cooperatively. Playground has implemented a true, live, open-world session with up to 72 people, and the game is not set to online-only restrictions. Rewind and photo mode is still available, as well as being able to pause the game while the world still persists. Users are able to create custom events and races, and Playground Games has two planned expansions for Forza Horizon 4, and the last expansions for Forza Horizon 3 were massively successful, both scoring 87 out of 100, to keep that game alive throughout the following year. Multiplayer and replayability gets a score of 8 out of 10. This puts the categorized review of Forza Horizon 4 score at an 8 out of 10, and if we combine that score with the Metacritic aggregate prediction, it brings us to a final prediction for Forza Horizon 4 to an 85 on Metacritic. This is compared to the 84 for Spider-Man, but the review scores are subjective, and looking at both, I personally would push Spider-Man up to 88 and Forza Horizon 4 to 90. I know it's unorthodox to compare an open-world action-adventure game, especially one with such a huge character like Spider-Man, with an open-world racing game, but both will undoubtedly do very well, and you can't lose with one of the best superhero games in years and the best racing game around. This is Colt Eastwood. Thanks for sticking around long enough to see the analysis. It's funny to pit these games against each other, but I'm getting both. I cannot wait to play them. Spider-Man will easily outsell Forza Horizon 4, even with it being offered on PC and Xbox. But we've crunched the numbers, and I can't find a way to justify lowering them any more than 85 or 84. That's why I'd rather raise them up to 88 or 90. I'm anxious to see what all of you would score for both of these games. Let me know in the comment section. If you like my content, let me know by subscribing, share the video with your gaming community, and if you have any specific questions, which I know you will because this is kind of a polarizing subject, add me on Xbox Live and PSN at Colt Eastwood as well. Good luck waiting these last few weeks while we pass the time to play Spider-Man, and in the meantime, please, be nice.